Um, I believe you're all aware uh, that uh, um, you are, we expect you to send some questions here to the panel. We have a few prepared, just in case you don't send any, we have a few <laughs> as a backup. Ones, but we are expecting uh, some questions from you. Um, you can send them through the app, uh, the one that's uh, been uh, underused today. I'm, someone told me a while ago that uh, the app was in number 13 on the top of the enterprise apps or something like that on the App Store. Uh, well, at least for today. Tomorrow, probably, <laughs> it won't be, <laughs> not even on the top. Um, second thing, we have this um, sunset party after the event. So, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, no, not, that's not all. A third thing, um, don't forget the challenges, the social media challenges and the, you know, those things because there are some prizes also as well. Um, <coughs> the reason I'm with the phone is because I'm expecting your questions. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Should we put some in? Hmm? What? Should we ask ourselves? <laughs> we can. Yeah. Ask your own question. Or <laughs> <laughs> in the in the in the meanwhile, the only person here on the panel that you might not yet uh, uh, have seen today is Sergio um, on the other side. Um, but some of you probably uh, already know him. He's already been a speaker in our event uh, once, twice, twice, twice. Uh, always with a huge success. In at least in one of those uh, events, he was the top speaker, um, probably because of that slide with the cat. Yeah, probably <laughs> it helped. It helped yeah. definitely. It helped. Um, and he's a cybersecurity specialist, so one of the best ones in Portugal, I would say. Uh, so we have, I believe we have here a question about security. We do? Okay. So shall we start? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I would start by the, the question here that's here on number seven. <laughs> this is not in order, is it? There's no it's a random order. Okay, um, it's one that I'm, that I'm really curious about. So it's um, kind of put it in front, up front, because I'm really curious about it. It, it has to do with the Manrique's talk uh, this morning. The, that thing about the OSPO. Mm -hmm. um, and I double-checked it with uh, some guys here in the, audi in the audience and uh, in the event, and you might as well now uh, take part of it. Um, if we were all familiar with that concept of OSPO here in Portugal, and the answer I got was no. So, but he uh, presented, and presented well, the importance of that position. So, I don't know if you agree with me that we, we don't, we're not familiar with this position, in either, well, not smaller companies on those ones, for sure not, but on larger companies. Has anyone on the room seen that OSPO position on the market on some company? Raise its hand, please. <laughs> I don't see a hand. <laughs> I see one hand here. <laughs> okay, so tell, can you go a little bit uh, more into that? Because I, I, probably you, 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 that's an idea and a position that was created uh, in larger markets, mm -hmm. uh, probably in the US. Your experience yeah. comes from there. Yeah, basically, the, the idea of OSPO came from this concept of, OK, at some point, companies are adopting, inner, are adopting open source. So that, that's clear. And I am sure that even not having any open source plan office in your company, or any company you know, they have some legal team that is taking care, of, uh, they should be taking care of things like license. There should be also other people taking care of things about security issues that could happen with the packages they are using internally for building whatever. 
So th those were the first things that people start to realize, oh, we should be at some point be coordinated because legal team is, needs to be aware of all the things that are coming to the, to the company. Then we have these security people that needs to check out what things are coming or instead of having people with separate hats, okay, why not having all together in the same office? And then they start to realize, okay, if we are also contributing to open source, at some point we need to understand how open source projects work, how we can impact on them, how we can influence in these projects. So again, we need someone from the company that probably is already there, is do, working as DevRel or community manager or whatever that is doing this stuff for you. So basically, let's put all these things, these pieces together in a position in an office. Let's call that the open source program office and let's work together in a strategy to make that work. Can you give some more examples of companies, because you mentioned Uber. Yeah. Some other company that uses that position. And also, y y all the others here on the panel, have you seen it? Yeah. You Google, did? Good. Microsoft. <laughs> Sorry? Google, Microsoft. Okay. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Zalando? Um, yes, but we don't call it uh, open source program uh, office, so we have the open source team, but it really depends on the, the companies, how they want to name the office. Uh, GitLab, GitHub, many companies have the open source program office, yeah. Okay. Comcast is another well-known example from the to the group. The ones that set up the to the group initially, if I remember well, was basically Google, GitHub, uh, Facebook, uh, the people from the Linux Foundation itself as far as I remember. And then Comcast was the next to join, then Uber, now Lyft also I think is there. Uh, Shell, I think they have some people there in the community. But they are public. You can go there to the, to the group website and see the list of people. Autodesk, that was, I don't know who quoted, I think it was David, you quoted Guy Martin from Autodesk. Mm -hmm. he, was the, he's the, he was the manager of the Autodesk to the group. Autodesk. Open source, all together in the same sentence. <laughs> okay. But there's a there's a minimalist version of that, which is like the compliance department. Mm -hmm. It's not quite the same thing. It's like uh, <clears throat> the minimum thing that you can do is to have the compliance department that makes sure that uh, whatever you distribute is distributed legally. For example, my TV when I impacted it had uh, some legal papers about uh, GPL and Apache licenses that had to do with the software that was inside. No, that, I would not I say that they this. have an open source policy. They have the minimum that they need so that they are able to distribute things which are based on Linux and many other things without being in an illegal situation. That's much more common than a you know, more broad OSPO. No, but that I can understand well. Um, and the same thing happens uh, to us uh, uh, at Saiwan uh, more and more when we sign contracts for larger projects um, in, a, in a contract that has, I don't know, let's suppose 20 pages of contract. Well, a full page is about uh, violation of third party rights uh, and towards open source, the usage of open source software, uh, making us liable if we have some problems or we cause some problem by using some uh, uh, open source software, which in fact would not be or should or could not be really uh, open source, something like that. But at BBC, do you have that position? We, we don't. I mean, so, so Hong mentioned open source guilds as well in, in her talk, and, and that's the way we've tried to do it as a... You know, it's, it's, it's a community of people who are interested. They're all in the same Slack channel. We kind of have a monthly get-together, and there's, there's a legal representative, there's, there's engineering representative, and, and I basically just drive that group, and that's always been good enough for us. I mean, I, I think as we evolve, we might, it might start to formalize a bit more, but, but there's been, because the BBC is like a lot of autonomous units, that they've all kind of got different requirements, so R&D have a very different requirement for, for us, and so, the, you know, it, it, the, everyone's got an input in some way. Okay, good. So basically the conclusion is that uh, the position makes sense. I mean, maybe it's not always called like that, but it makes sense and we should definitely pay attention to it. And larger companies should definitely pay attention to it. Yes, it makes sense if you plan to organize a program because the whole idea of the position is why do you need an open source program? Are you running anything program? Is open source part of your business strategy? Like, it's a good thing that com big companies are having the program, but it's really, you need to look at your own company. So the, 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 the position tells itself, if you have 
not run any program, what is the point of having an open source program of this? So basically, the, the whole idea, I think, coming also from, from Google. For many years ago, they started the Google Summer of Code, and they need uh, the person who runs the program. So that's why they have the open source program of Google to run the Google Summer of Code, then the program become bigger, expanding like more sector, and they have more people um, involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we've done is reached out to, to open source program offices at big companies to ask them, look, we've got this particular problem. How do you, how do you deal with it? And so, so they are very, um, you know, kind of community minded and, and will help you out. Yeah. Okay, good. Understood. Um, second question, let me just check if we have anything arriving in here on this side. Uh, not yet, but uh, an instruction here for me to pass to the room that it's enough to go on the app and send a message to a user call discussion panel. There's some user call discussion panel on the app. Okay, second thing, second question here. Uh, second question here about uh, um, Zalando and uh, BBC again and making the switch then to uh, moving forward. Um, your, your companies are taking real advantage of uh, um, open source. Yeah. Um, and the question, which is <laughs> here, okay. Um, the question that they, they sent here was, um, what is the impact importance of open source, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't go that way. I would go a different way. Uh, because I think we don't need to discuss the importance because impo the importance is well proven. Mm -hmm. It's one thing that you both mentioned. You were coincident on that. I don't know if you discussed it last night. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, kind of the, on the same direction. You mentioned that uh, uh, there was a, a, f a feeling of uh, well-being on the companies because of giving back to the community. And that we don't see that much. Uh, Again, we don't see that much. Maybe I'm looking on the wrong direction, mm -hmm. but we don't see that much. Companies giving back the way you mentioned it so proudly and so, um, is that really a feeling? And uh, because I, 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 I enjoyed listening to that. It's great, it's amazing. Yeah, Are you f I mean, uh, it, it definitely is the case at the BBC. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's a, I mean, it, all the way up to our CTO, he's always kind of saying, oh, you know, we could really do good here, you know, we should really kind of push this. So um, I, think, I think what tends to happen, though, is, you know, you know, the pace of product development that's going on, that giving time to, to make things open source and to, you know, to think about things that aren't just your immediate sort of business challenges are the, are the areas where it starts to, it starts to interfere. So, so that's what we've been trying to do and encourage people to think about their 10% time and things like that. And, um, you know, are there communities you could be part of? So whenever someone says that I want to contribute, we try and make sure that can happen. And you have that, uh, you also have that, you publicize it, you take advantage of it because you have that website that yeah. you showed you showed, in, in, and by, through that website, you uh, also go and uh, um, send messages to the, to the market, to the community, in, even to recruit people, mm -hmm. to, to get attention, to gather attention. We, you're, you're not the first ones um, with that feeling. Uh, last year, we had here La Redoute, uh, you know, the French company, the, the retailer one, big one. And um, they were precisely showing, they applied for a, for a call for, on the call for paper stage, they applied for a presentation to, to come to the event, and they, they, they did it, they came. Uh, it was a nice talk. Um, they have developed internally um, a framework for testing, testing applications, mm -hmm. and they were precisely on that event promoting it because they were saying that they wanted to give it, and they were already giving it back to the community, and they were looking for people to contribute, but to then share and reshare and uh, you know the whole concept of the, the open source culture. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyone wants to say anything else on this? Yes. Perhaps you have questions already? Ah, I'm just I don't know. Sorry, I just want to say quickly about Zalando uh, <laughs> into this. So I cannot talk for our founders, but I can talk for the engineers that I work with. So one, uh, very 
amazing thing about working at Zalando is I have excellent college. I, I remember that um, when I uh, started with the company, I met a person whom we have several common friends in the community who contribute to the KDE community. We have people that are very active in portraits, um, um, SQLs, and then um, there is uh, one team in Zalando even. The team lead set a day in the week that this is the day for contributing to open source project. And of course, we are very proud, not only because um, I don't think that everyone thinks, oh, we are doing the good thing, but when you release something open source, your name go along with it. So you, you get the fame, you get the uh, reputation in the community. And uh, one time a few months ago, ago I remember my friend uh, in Singapore, one person that got involved in the community, also quite famous in Singapore. And the person made a tweet that he is using uh, a product of Zalando. And, we, we, and, and he connected to, with somebody uh, inside Zalando uh, himself, which I have never aware of. But um, I haven't met the all uh, 2,000 developers at Zalando, but I feel that the people are really motivated and they want to, to contribute back, like for several reasons. They want to do the good thing, but if you look at individual benefits, you can learn a lot and then you can gain reputation for yourself. That is the motivation okay. of the yeah. Maybe to add, there's another good reason to do so, not to just to do the good thing and to promote your name, but also to have influence over a project. Um, because, I mean, things are going forward, and if you, if you want to have somehow control over the project and want to have it in, in, in the end like that the project is good for you, then it's uh, a good idea to contribute. Uh, so, I mean, then you are well known in the community and you have some influence over the project, so, which is also good for you then. And probably a little bit also for the recognition, because uh, especially in the younger generations, uh, they, they, as everyone does, they, but even more on the younger generations, they enjoy a lot being reco recognized by the work they deliver, by the cool, good quality of work, yeah, definitely. Okay. I think Raquel wants to say something. Oh, we have a question. Several. Several. <laughs> wow. Now it's escalating. Escalating. <laughs> <laughs> Gustavo <Okay. Church. laughs> This is for Gustavo. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Okay, one for you. you know. <laughs> I, I'm and to Alexander. Okay. I sent it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Three. So. Um, I think we can start by Alexander because I was precisely shifting to him. Um, and this question goes in line with, uh, with the one we had here also prepared. Um, your, the, the topic you, the, you delivered on your talk, it's uh, quite interesting. It's a, a, an ever-lasting uh, topic. Um, no, because, we, we, well, we always feel that our money is not well, uh, <laughs> well used. Um, always. I, I believe it's a common sense across Europe and probably not just in Europe. If you go across the world, probably it will be pretty much the same. Um, so, if it's so common sense, uh, why is it still happening? Why, uh, why can't we change it? And uh, the question here, in fact, goes pretty much in the same uh, direction. Uh, it says, is it possible to share the current status of the campaign and the plans to guide, guide information to the new European Commission to raise awareness to this team? Um, uh, to clarify information from your presentation, thank you. So it's pretty yeah. much the same question. Is, uh, yeah. If it's so obvious, uh, why so? Well, I mean, first of all, it's not obvious to all. Uh, politicians. Uh, I mean, wow. it's obvious to us. It's obvious to loads of people. That's true. And uh, we already seen major shifts uh, um, in Spain, in France, uh, in Italy. Um, still, I mean, there's a, a lack of information, knowledge. Um, I mean, we have uh, loads of politicians who have, for example, security issues or, or something like this if it comes to, to, to open source or free software. And um, I mean, as well, we have, we still do have these vendor logins, and uh, it's not so easy to, to get out of this. So, and that's why um, we are fighting for a system where you, I mean, switch to free software every time you are doing something new, because else it's 
very complicated to do a migration project from one day to another, and um, if you are doing so, um, you might fail, and this is then also, uh, I mean, bad in terms for uh, lobbyists from the other side are coming and say, hey, they failed, so just uh, stay with our products and, and so on. And uh, I mean, it's also, we are a small NGO compared to the Microsoft uh, or, or uh, Google lobbyists, so and um, this is also something we should keep in mind. So, I mean, we are somehow a big community, yeah, that's true, but on the other side are like, um, companies with billions of dollars, and uh, it's quite easy for them to, to send lobbyists to, to Brussels or to yeah, the capitals. Yeah. And um, the corridors. I mean, yeah. So it's it's me for 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 Europe, and um, I don't know how many lobbyists are working uh, on on uh, at Microsoft uh, and stuff like this. So, but, but the feeling is that it's happening. It's happening. We are in good contact, especially with the European Commission. For example, last week we had a, we had the policy event in Brussels where people from the European Commission showed up. The Vice President of the European Parliament have been there. Um, we uh, had an open letter where where loads of organisation agreed on um, where we asked the Commission um, to take some several steps uh, in, the, in the upcoming um, term. Um, we want concrete facts and figures, uh, for example. And so, I mean, we, we're having a lot of people inside the European Commission on our side, but um, it's uh, especially true for IT people or people who are addicted somehow to, to free software and technology. But it's, it's um, also hard to make it to, um, to a main pop topic. Uh, we have loads of other problems, um, migration, um, stuff like this. And so it's, it's, it's hard to push it on the agenda on a, on a, on a high level point. So, and I mean, we're constantly working on this and we see something like the talent declaration. Um, we see the commitment by member states. Um, but still what is missing, something like we have in Spain or in Barcelona where they say, okay, we spend 70% of our budget on free software projects. So all we have from the commission or the member states is like, we want to give money into open source, but how much? So why don't you have like uh, in, 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 in Barcelona? It's all, almost like a political decision. Yeah, and it's always a political decision. It's ah. it's never ever a, a technical decision. So it's the same for, for for Munich, for example. So I mean, they had good experience with this um, Linux system there, and then they changed the government there, and then they switched back to 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 Microsoft. So and there's no reason then to just waste money. So and um, to to make offer to Microsoft, so, and this is only a political decision, and this is also true on, on all levels we are working, so we don't know, maybe uh, in, in 10 years, Barcelona is, is switching back because the, the government changed, and that's totally strange, it but it's, that's the way how it works, so, and what we are trying to do is to, to get, um, like, legal texts where they say, so, this is our goal, we want to do this and this, to make it even harder to, to, to do the step back then. Okay, so it's happening, it will take time. Yeah. It will happen, but we don't know. The, the snowball is not rolling yet down the hill. Well, I mean, still, um, not I yet. mean, there, there's a lot of progress when, when yeah. we see France, Spain, Italy, but there are, but there are other countries, who are like yeah. especially Germany, so it's, there's a lack of commitment and they're doing very strange things. So now we got a study that, um, regarding digital sovereignty and um, also Ursula von der Leyen, the, the new um, okay. commission president, was raising, raising this issue and I think this is something where we have to step in and say, hey, if you want to be, um, in, yeah, if you, if you want to, to be the master of your code, then it should be open source and not just bought by somehow sure. and pay licenses like every year. Yeah. Anyone else wants to join in? Well, maybe just a quick join in uh, in the topic. There is the specific political side of, of this. Um, well, as you know, this, is, this subject interests me. Uh, but there's also a more wide uh, management uh, problem of public things, um, which turns, um, which makes this a symptom of something broader. I mean, being suboptimal in decisions, it's not exclusive for software. So. In general, I would say that we need to plant the incentives for things to become more rational than they are. Because this is a symptom. It's just that software is complex. It's very logistical and therefore is a, is a symptom that manifests itself with more intensity than maybe 
the purchases of uh, paper for the printers or, or other things which are not okay, so... Okay, so if, if I well detailed. understood, what, what we're saying is that uh, um, it doesn't happen, it's not a, 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 um, a question of uh, open source software or even a question of software. It just happens across uh, because it's a matter of mindset or mind thinking. So let's not discuss it because otherwise we would no, no, spend the rest of the afternoon discuss it, discussing discuss politics. It, but let's understand that uh, software is something very detailed that needs to be decided by people who are um, equally detailed or equal, equally capable of managing details. They need to be rigorous and willing to do their absolute best. They need to be competent, rigorous, motivated. The more detailed the subject, uh, the more of this you need to get a, a good result. So if you are the manager of, of uh, papers for the printers, you don't need to be especially sharp because I don't think you will find much of a difference between papers from different suppliers and not many, you know, network effects between the papers and the printers, you know. It's kind of on a different scale than anything related to software, the interdependencies of software, the interdependencies of users uh, and software and departments. This is all very detailed. And more, the more detailed things are, the more competent the managers need to be. And f for managers to be competent, we need the normal, you know, reward and punishment incentives in place, the carrot and the stick. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that this is a general topic of ma ma uh, management of public things, which manifests itself intensively due to the detailed nature of software. Of software. Uh, I hope my, my idea is clear. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe just to add, but there's also a lack of knowledge, ma'am. So, I mean, during the copyright directive in the EU, we've seen that they had the exclusion for non-commercial free software or open source software <laughs> in the beginning. And it took us one year to tell them that there is nothing like non-commercial open source. It's every time commercial. So it can be commercial, it can be not, but there's nothing like non-commercial software. And I yep. mean, it's, it's from the European Commission, it's from the Council. So, I mean, this, uh, these are people who are should be somehow aware of the, of the uh, IT landscape and, and the ecosystem, but they, they proposed such a strange text. And it, it, I mean, it took us one year to get this out and to tell them that there's nothing like non-commercial software. I, I did so, seven years of political interactions yeah. uh, uh, related to this topic here in Portugal um, when I was part of uh, the board of ESOP. Um, and I can tell you exactly the same. They should this, they should that, they should understand, they should be aware, yet, it took years yeah. from being, uh, you know, from not even being uh, accepted for a meeting to <laughs> reaching a position where we could yeah. be heard and have some positive influence in the course of events. Yeah. It took years. I mean, sometimes they do lack competence. But for many years, and we need to recognize also the community lack the skills to communicate. And, and, uh, and, that's why we per, are here. <laughs> per, yes, uh, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we miscommunicated. Yeah. By, by we, I'm generalizing, but the whole free software community miscommunicated. Maybe the emphasis was put uh, in, the wrong, uh, in the wrong spots, or maybe um, the form rather than the content was not ideal for the receivers, uh, or and slash or combinations of these things. Um, so all this has improved. Um, but now the competence of the people who are actually managing the things needs to improve and we, we need to push them further with the right tone, with the right form, with the right message. We need to keep going to make it happen. But still not to lose the understanding that this is more general. It's in general optimal or rational management of public things. And across countries. Across, across countries, countries yes. probably, yeah. Okay, so moving next, uh, because we still want to reach Sergio uh, at the bottom. <laughs> um, Gustavo, uh, this one's for you. We have a question here which crosses with the other one that we had prepared. Um, so this one is, um, um, can you share your intuition about the evolution of Portuguese private companies or public institutions on adoptions, migrations to us uh, in their ICT technologies and for their, their users. And this goes a little bit in, uh, well, I would mix it with uh, the, the, the topic on your talk, 
about that thing of the elephant, to which I don't agree. Um, okay. as, we <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. as we discussed before. <laughs> um, no, so for I've you all to know, I don't agree with his position. We will discuss it. We've already done so. So are companies really moving on that direction? We, we, cannot, we cannot speak in general of companies because you have all kinds of different companies from different sectors uh, and of different sizes. So if you do an average, the average is probably meaningless because the companies are so different. You can have a company of 10 people and a company of 200 or 5,000. The question here was so for the, the different sizes, yes. Yeah, and so, and so private and public. Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the, the, the um, organization who can answer the question is the one you are the president of, <laughs> <laughs> which should have aggregate data updated. And uh, the, the, the growth of the, the sector of uh, IT uh, open source suppliers. We love each other. <laughs> we love each other. Huh? Clear. <laughs> you know, but, but, it, but you have to admit that the, the growth of the, the sector of this aggregate of IT suppliers is an indirect indication of the growth of the business and therefore of the market. I cannot speak for companies in general. I could say, yes, 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 the companies with, we work with are adopting open source a lot, but it's just a sample. We are 24 companies in ESOP, so we ha ESOP has a broader view, uh, and we know that the numbers are yeah. improving, but I, I will leave that part to you. What I'm saying okay. is companies, just to finish, companies are very different. So some elite, smarter companies are adopting open source with furious anger, and open source is marching in uh, um, very quickly for other not so elite, more traditional companies. It's either going very slow, and for some, are, it's, it's not going at all. It's just business as usual. But we need aggregate data. Yeah, this. okay, let me add something to that. Uh, the fact is that there, there is no data available on the market, you know, there are no studies. There's a study the, on discussion now within the European Union uh, to go across countries uh, and sponsored by some, some money uh, in Europe. Someone is, play, is putting money on the table to perform that study uh, and it comes... It's the European Commission who puts the money on the table? It's the European it's, Commission, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, it's supposed to be across countries. And so we would have some numbers and some figures because those figures would be worked by some company and so they should be uh, real numbers. The fact is that so far, right now, we don't have those numbers. Uh, in Portugal, we don't have. I don't know if it's the same thing in Greece um, or in Spain or in France. We, here in Port, uh, just for you to have an idea today, we have here four nationalities in terms of national uh, organizations for open source from these uh, four countries that I just mentioned. Uh, they were there on the open room um, and Despina was also there, she's from Greece. Um, but I, 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 would say, I would pretty much risk to say that uh, um, there are no figures also on those countries and she's pointing no with a head. So it's pretty much the same thing. Now, from my experience in terms of company, because I'm also within a company, uh, so I'm not talking about ESOP now, and that's where we disagree on some points in terms of approach to the market. We feel that the market is really growing both on uh, public and private sectors. And we don't experience that problem that uh, Gustavo mentioned, uh, the elephant in the room. Because we feel that customers are really putting money on the table, money on the projects, and they are uh, having um, a real and a, a credible, um, how do, you say, does we, do we say credible, um, approach uh, to when it comes to open source projects. So they understand the value, the numbers are rising, we, in our company, we handle and we manage huge data centers in Portugal, um, with hundreds of Linux servers, both Red Hat and SUSE. Um, we perform services, manage services, technical uh, uh, at a higher level or a lower level, um, and customers just pay for it. So there's no, we don't feel that, uh, that experience that you were mentioning. We don't feel that much because we don't, it's less than 25% of uh, our work but um, maybe. But w w what I say is that in general, 
in general, I don't mean specifically our company, in general, uh, the array of companies where, and the array of potentially interested parties, we are not getting as much as we could get of the potential of open source together. We are probably, probably. still underperforming, you know, as Probably, as but then there are other issues. So the, 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 the answer to the question is yes, it's growing. So we should go for it definitely because it's growing. There's market over there. There are projects. Uh, but we can do better. But there's always ways to improve it. So you, you can always do better, of course. Yes. Um, Next how question. Yeah. We have to how you found here in the middle? Yeah. But maybe, <laughs> maybe to let's come back to the facts and figures. So we have these uh, facts and figures for France. We have somehow these facts for Germany and the UK, and we can see that's a that's a growing market. And we've okay. been lobbying very Good. hard for the European Commission to uh, present this tender in order to get these facts and figures also, uh, mm -hmm. also for Europe. And what we are doing now is to ask them to do this again uh, in the next year because it's uh, not okay to have just one study. We have to have continuous studies in order to show that there is a, a growing market. And then I'm pretty sure if we have these facts and figures, uh, this will also help um, uh, uh, help us as a community to they be will. Uh, more here when it comes to meeting with the European Commission, as we can tell them. So this is a big market, and it's growing, and you should take care of what we are thinking and saying. Yeah, and you should invest on it. Um, either if you're a customer or a supplier, just go for it, because it's, everyone's going for it. Okay, now the last question for Sergio, um, about cybersecurity, of course. Um, I have a question here, and it goes across the other one that we had prepared. Uh, ours was more generalist in terms of um, uh, some, um, some people that might be afraid of using open source software in terms of cybersecurity. Well, I'm not responsible for this question. I would never place it because I, I, my opinion goes totally against it. It's much more secure to go with open source. But the fact is that on the market, it, uh, there's this perception, uh, at least on some companies, that uh, um, proprietary software, it's more robust, more secure. And then we have this question that comes from someone that uh, works or worked in Brazil. And um, uh, this person was working for a payment gateway in Brazil. Security analysts used to prefer tools not open source because they said that the auditors, again, the same problem, uh, used to give more credibility to such products. Um, so, with your experience, uh, um, was this a choice, uh, uh, this analyst's choice, uh, or had more to do with, um, uh, with, well, as a real background, a real background, a technical background, or not? Was it just some, uh, again, some political uh, issue? Well, um, imagine that uh, you have uh, a, mach a, machi a machine, uh, a black box, that uh, you put something on one side, you put um, uh, meat on one side, and the other side you have uh, sausages, okay? And uh, that works. And you say, okay, this is great, but uh, um, at one time the machine stops and uh, on the other side, uh, you have eggs, okay? And um, the vendor says, okay, it's okay, it's a feature. So, um, and you don't understand, and you will never understand that, because you don't have access to that black box. So, um, on security, it's not a good idea to bring to your company a black box that you don't know that uh, what is running there. Uh, because uh, things happen, and um, for instance, if I'm, I'm a manufacturer for uh, some country, and I know that my enemy is going to use that piece of uh, software, um, why shouldn't I put something that one day I can activate and my enemy, all my uh, systems of my enemy stops? So, um, security must be um, transparent. It must have transparency and uh, on the company and uh, uh, we must know every time what is running and what piece of code is there because that's the um, only let that way we can uh, assure that uh, the system is safe if you don't do that we we are believers we believe and have faith that uh, that machine is okay so 
uh, if you are a believer, okay. Uh, if, <laughs> if you 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 believe in everything that uh, you heard and everything that uh, the vendor says, then it's okay, and the auditor auditors are right. But uh, if you um, want to implement cybersecurity um, and you want to really protect your company, uh, you should use open source. Yes, definitely agree. So next time, I don't know who placed the question. You have to hire Sergio. He goes there to Brazil. He yeah. gives away that explanation, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Kind of a joke. And that's all. <laughs> They're cutting the <laughs> needs to go. <laughs> okay, thank you all. Thank you all for, for being here and for these, uh, some jokes and some uh, comments and uh, all this good mood that we always have. We must have it in life. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>